Welcome to Moment with Bishop Roland Peters once again. Today we are continuing in the Dynamic Ministry Gift series. This teaching series is taken from my book, Dynamic Ministry Gifts. You know, we've been teaching this since the last five weeks, and I believe you have been blessed. And if you have not listened to the past episode, you can go back and watch it and view them on this my uh, ministry page. Remember, you can view all the past and future episodes right here for free on this my ministry page on Facebook. That is Roland Peters Ministry page on Facebook. Thank you. Today's topic is how to discover and develop your gift. Actually, or you can call it 10 ways to discover and develop your gift. You see, discovery and develop your gift is an important part of fulfilling your purpose in life. As a Christian, we believe that these gifts come from God and are meant to be used for His glory and the benefits of others. However, it can be difficult to know where to start in, in identifying and developing your gifts. And that is why this teaching is here to help you. Now, in this teaching, therefore, we will explore 10 practical steps to help you discover and develop your gifts. And I believe if you explore these 10 ways, definitely, sooner or later, you will. And in fact, for sure, I guarantee you, you are going to have an idea and even a confirmation from God about what your gift or what your gift is by the grace of God. Now, here are the 10 ways to discover and develop your gifts. All right? Number one. In order to develop, or excuse me, in order to discover your gifts from God, or maybe talent and so on and so forth, the first place to start from is with God. Number one is pray. You need to go to God in prayer for guidance and wisdom in discovering your gifts. As James chapter 1 verse 5 in the book of James, as James put it, James 1 5, all right, it says, If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. All right, so he said, If you lack wisdom, or in case you don't know what you are gifted to do, if you lack anything, not only wisdom, you can go to God, you should ask God, who gives generously. To all. Take note of that. God gives generously. If you ask him, he will give to you. Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. He said, the reason why you have not asked is because you ask not. Hallelujah. So if you ask, you are going to get. Alright? So if any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to, to you. Alright? So you may not hear an audible voice, you may not see an angel, but definitely, one way or the other, God will make His will known to you, alright? And then the gift will begin to manifest and even people will begin to recognize the gift. So the very first place to start from is to pray. Pray for guidance and wisdom in discovering your gift. Now, that takes us to number two, ways to discover your gift, okay? And that is number, number two is study the Bible and learn about the different types of gifts mentioned in the scriptures. The New Testament has several passages that mention gifts, including 1 Corinthians 12, 1 to 11, so where we see the gift of the Holy Spirit, all right, all right, the manifestation gifts. Then you, or you, if you read also Ephesians 4, 11, all right, you see the ministry gifts. And then also we have Romans 12, 6 to 8. We are, the Bible says that God gives to each of us according to His grace. He has given us gift to do certain things well in the, the NLT translation. Alright? So, or you can read books. You write like one, one way to also learn is to read good Christian books by great authors and popular teachers. Alright? Or great teachers talking about the gifts of the Spirit and uh, the ministry gifts and so many others like that. So the first way to recognize, to discover your gift is to pray. Number two is to study the Bible and learn about the different types of gifts mentioned in the scriptures. Alright, now number three is to take a spiritual gift first 
or assessment to gain insight into your potential gifts. All right, this test can help you identify areas where you may have strengths and abilities, all right, and so that you can really know where your, where your strength lies and so that you can also uh, discover your abilities according to the test, all right. So in order to take the spiritual gift test, you can visit uh, this website, uh, spiritual gifts, plural, spiritual gifts test dot com spiritual gifts test dot com all right so if you visit that's https all right and then spiritual but just that spiritual gifts gifts in plural g i f t s then t e s t dot com spiritual all right the word spiritual then gift g i f t s then T E S T. That is spiritual S P I R U I T U A L. Then G I F T S T E S T dot com. Now, if you go to that spiritual gift test dot com, you all right. You you sign up. All right. You submit your email. Just register. It's free, by the way. All right. You register for free, and then you take the test. They ask you some question. I think it's almost about over sixty something question or there about. Now you answer those questions, if you answer them honestly, it will give you a summary of your strengths and weaknesses. You will see some of your dominant gifts, it will list about three, four, five that are your most dominant gift. So that with that, you can begin to know where your strength lies and so that you can concentrate more in those areas in order to fulfill your, your assignment from God. So that in order to fulfill your ministry in life or your assignment, hallelujah, as the case may be. All right, then number four, that takes us to number four. After the spiritual gift test, another thing you can do is to seek out opportunities to serve in your church or your community and observe where you feel most fulfilled and useful. All right, in the area of your strength or wherever you are gifted, you will be having, you will be feeling, you will have this feeling of fulfillment. All right, that's a sign of area where you are graced or area where you are gifted. Now, this can be a great way to test out different gifts and see where you may have a passion for serving in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. So you need to seek out opportunity to serve in your church or community and observe where you feel most fulfilled and useful. Alright, so that takes us to number five. Ways to, to I mean, the steps you can take to identify or to recognize your gift is to ask for feedback from others who know you well and can provide insight into your strengths and abilities. Sometimes others can, others, others can see, other people can see the gifts in us that we may not even be aware of that we have. I remember many years ago when I was growing up, in still young in the faith growing up, before I went into full-time ministry, I remember so some of my friends were the ones that first of all never recognized those gifts okay in fact one particular one was in a uh, i was in his church he invited me all right and he he said he noticed i have the gift of teaching or the other way. so he said okay i should share something all right so and i was trying to teach you know he actually asked me to lead prayer sorry he invited me and he asked me to lead the prayer session like a midweek prayer something to lead the church midweek service or the other about and then uh, inside me, I decided, okay, let me share some Bible teaching before I leave the prayer meeting. And as I was teaching, or I, as I put the root me, say, I should now end up, you say, I should end up my teaching and pray, and lead prayer. Now, because it's a prayer church, this kind of prayer, prayer, miracle service church and all so. Now, I thought maybe because he was in a hurry to just get the people to pray and all those stuff. But later on, he told me, he invited me another session again, another time again, and he asked me to take a session. And then he said, ah. Look, you this man of God, uh, you this brother, you need to, uh, you're supposed to be lecturing in Bible school because all your teachings, like Bible school teach you, are just teaching, 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 trying to teach some deep, deep things. Ah, I said, you lead the people, lead prayer, fire, fire, for people to shake it and, you know. Now, I felt a little, you know, somehow, I felt somehow that day because I thought he was, he didn't appreciate the way I was uh, trying to, but then he said something which later on, I realized that it was pointing to my teaching gift at that time. I didn't know it was my teaching gift that makes me that makes me to be hungry to explain things. I was having this passion to 
make people understand what I want them to, what they need to, even the prayer I want to lead. I want them to understand the principle of praying before we even pray, so that, that, so that their prayer will be answered according to scriptural uh, principles. So I didn't know it was that my teaching of the grace that was making me to feel like the gift. And I was making me to always want to explain things to people who want people to have a deeper understanding before I even do anything in church or any way I find myself when it comes to the things of God, as it were. Okay, so anyway, that was the first way, you know, I was getting feedback. Though initially it was not like in positive, it was in negative, but it was pointing me to, to let me know that, oh, you are not very good in this area, you are very good in this other area. And that is why I, today by the grace of God, I concentrated more in the area of my strength than areas of my weakness or where I don't have much strength, spiritually speaking. Hallelujah. So, anyway, that's just one example, but there are many others where people recognize I was in a fellowship, they were asked to do verse to verse scripture, and people notice, I just noticed that almost every time I was always having something to say in a group Bible study, almost every time I have something to say, and then I'll be explaining some things, explaining some things, and that's how, from the church where I was born again, or in the fellowship where I was born again. Now, I started noticing that I just like to see, I see some things in the scripture that others, those, even some of my seniors in the faith then, you couldn't see some of those things. And I just noticed that I didn't know it was a gift of teaching, to have revelational teachings and so on and so forth. That was how I developed and people get to confirm to me later, you have this gift, you have this grace. Hallelujah. Alright? So now, so get feedback from others who know you well and can provide insight into your strengths and your area of abilities. Now, number six, way to recognize your gift, to know what God has called you to do, all right, to discover your gift, is to practice using your gift in different settings. Practice using your gift. Like just cited the example, I was in a group Bible study, I was teaching, I was in a, with somebody coming to church to come and live prayer meeting. I didn't know if I wanted to explain a lot of things before, you know. So, just get... Uh, what I can call explore, or okay, another word for you is to explore. Whether you are in the church or in the place, whatever, you can take up some re responsibilities in the area where you perceive or you think that you are gifted in order to exp experiment and uh, definitely discover and find out what God has in store for you. So you need to practice using your gift in different settings and observe how they are received and how, that is, look at uh, how you feel when using them, that is, Look at, first of all, look at how, how they are received. When you, teach, let's take teaching for example, when you handle teaching in a place, whether in a group Bible study, in Sunday school, or in church settings, or whatever, uh, how do people respond to it? Alright, and um, then if you keep on teaching like that, you know that people are always getting blessed and the, the response is always wonderful. It, it could be that you have a teaching gift and uh, in that area, and so on and so forth. If you're asked to lead prayer and prayers, or you're asked to do something in church, and maybe you ask to sing, all right, and uh, people are blessed, are touched, and minister to, and feel refreshed. It could be you have the ability to sing and to lead worship and so on, to be a worship leader, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this can help you develop your skills and build confidence in your abilities, all right? So you need to practice using your gift in different settings and observe how people feel or how they respond to it and how you yourself you feel when you are using those gifts. Then that takes us to number seven. You need to seek mentorship. This is a big one. Seek mentorship or guidance from someone with a similar gift to learn from their experience and knowledge. You may not be able to see, meet some mentor face to face. Or right? you may have to read their books, watch their videos. And all this stuff. For example, if you perceive you are a Bible teacher, for instance, let me take that as an example again. You can decide to look, um, go and get materials of great Bible teachers, listen to great Bible teachers, and so on and so forth. All right. Or if you feel God is calling you to an apostolic group ministry, go and study the life of apostles and follow them through their materials and teachings and so on. But where possible, if you have someone you can see or meet with face to face. Or you can be under his tutelage and under his ministry. Now you can be under the person. Make sure you can even open up, you can discuss it and ask him that you want to follow him so that he can mentor you. And sometimes you may not even say anything, but you are following the person and he's mentoring you uh, remotely or indirectly. All right? So that you can seek mentorship or guidance from someone with a similar gift to learn from their experience and knowledge. Like I said, where, where possible, 
open up to the person, follow the ministry of that person, and learn from them. And where you are confused or what you don't understand, ask questions. It's going to help you. Hallelujah. Now, so this can be a great way to gain insight into how to best use your gift. All right, first to recognize your gift and to use your gift. Then that brings us to number eight of how to recognize and be able to use your gift. Now, be open to try new things, again, and stepping out of your comfort zone in order to discover new gifts. Sometimes we may not know we have a particular gift until we try something new, all right? Now, that takes us to number nine, all right? Remember that these gifts are not limited to specific roles or positions and may change or evolve over time. For example, I remember when God called me, I started out uh, in the ministry of the, with a teaching gift when God called me initially. The first gift I noticed I had was the teaching gift. That was several years ago, right? Then after a while, after some years, I noticed the Lord moved me. I actually had a revelation and encounter and I saw, before I began, I entered the second ministry, I saw that there was a, in a vision, I saw that God was God showed me, I saw that I was in a floor, of, of, uh, I was in a particular floor of a building, and I was looking at another floor, I saw that the place was vacant for me to step in, alright, and so on and so forth. But you may not see dream, you may not see vision. But shortly after that, the Lord confirmed, sent me to go and be under a man of God, who had a prophetic gift, and I was there for six months, and then uh, it was when I was uh, you know, still very young in the faith, or in the ministry. I'm talking about over 30 years ago, all right? Now, so the call on solution, I think that should be about 35 years ago now, or 10, over 30 years ago. Now, so the call on solution, and then the Lord at a point ministered to me that he has added the, uh, he has given me a gift of the prophetic ministry, that he has, he has added a professional prophetic ministry to my life. So at that point, I was operating as a prophet and teacher for many years until when the Lord came to me again and ministered to me and asked me to go and be ordained, you know, under a man of God, uh, all right? I actually had a revelation again, an encounter. Uh, God ministered to me a lot through visions and revelations because of my prophetic gifts and so on. Now, yours may not be true dreams or vision, but then one way or the other, the Lord is going to still confirm your calling. But again, the Lord now ministered to me that is moving me to a new apostle, is moving me to the apostolic ministry. Because he asked me then, he said I should go to, I saw in the vision and I heard a voice said to me, he said go to the nations. Alright, that was before we started going to Ghana, Cameroon, and Ivory Coast, and the rest of them. Okay? Alright, so the Lord said, as he has called me, I do me to be a poor, he has anointed me as an apostle to the nations. But before I took up, the Lord ministered to me and led me through a vision that there is one father in the Lord, where the church where I was born again, I was no longer relating physically with them. I've lost contact with them for about 20 something years or more than 38. But the Lord now spoke to me to go to the leader of the he has apostolic ministry. He has gone to be with the Lord about five years ago now. But before that, the Lord led me to him to go and have him lay hands on me. Alright? Uh, to commission me into the apostolic ministry. Alright? So I saw in a dream, my wife and I knelt down and I saw I held a, a bottle of oil. And I said, sir, uh, I want you to pray for me. And then he asked me a question in the dream. He said, for what? I said, I said, well, sir, I know that I'm a, uh, I'm a, he asked me which gift do I have. He said, you want to pray for me for the apostolic, you want to pray for me for an apostolic anointing. Inside me, I was now thinking, ah, sir, I only know that I was a prophet and teacher. You know, I was trying to say, I don't know about that. But to call long story short, I went to the man and I explained that to him. Oh, the man shared something with me that touched me, I mean, that blessed me. I've read that passage before, but the way he applied it, he said I should open my Bible. It's now in real life. I went to him and I told him my experience. And now I said, how I reacted when he said he wanted to pray for me for apostolic anointing. And now I reacted and I said, oh, sir, I only know that I'm a prophet and teacher. He said I should open to, now, now physically in his house. My wife and I went to see him physically after some time, after that uh, encounter. The dream. The dream. In answer, I should open to uh, uh, the book of Acts, Acts 13. I open. Then say we should read. Uh, we read. We I read it. It says, uh, and then he said, "What do I find there?" I saw that the Bible said there was a certain prophet and teacher that was in the church that was at Antioch. Then he listed the name of about seven people, and then he said, 
Baba Stu said, as the minister and pastor, the Holy Ghost said, separate me and Barnabas for the work that I have called them. And then they were commissioned to apostolic assignment. All right? Now, he now said something there. He said, the church, those people were, first of all, according to the scripture there, he said I was in the church that was at that time, Antioch, certain prophets and teachers. Did you get that? Certain prophets and teachers. And I was a prophet and teacher. And that was my reaction in my dream, in that vision. All right? I said I'm a prophet and teacher. He said most people that God called into apostolic ministry, scripturally even, that they were first of all, uh, well, they were for, before they became apostles, they were first of all a, a prophet and teachers or prophet or teacher, something like that. But that, that they were first of all in that office of prophet and teacher before God called them and sent them forth into the apostolic ministry. I said, wow, because it was then after the Holy Ghost sent them, they became apostle because apostle is a sent one. Hallelujah. Wow, it was a confirmation in this. I've never heard that before. Even as a professor of ministry, I didn't understand that. Wow. It was a revelation. It was a confirmation. Scripturally confirmation, confirming what God spoke to me. Hallelujah. So, alright? So, remember, gifts are not limited to specific roles or position, and they may change or evolve over time. Our gift can be used in many different ways and may shift as we grow and change, God can add another dimension to you, but you need to just recognize your gift and operate within your gift. And it shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Now that brings bring us to the last point, which is number 10. Continuously ask for the Holy Spirit guidance and discernment in developing and using your gift for the glory of God. Like I said, because sometimes, like number 9 we read, your gift might have moved or God may be adding more to you. So you need to continue, continuously ask for the Holy Spirit guide, to guide you and to discern how to develop and use your gift for the glory of God. You know, it is recorded in John 14, 26. He said, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Alright? So this is very, very important. So as I bring this teaching to a conclusion today, about discovering and developing your gift, what I'm going to say to you is, is this. Discovering and developing our gift is an important part of our spiritual journey, like I did mention earlier. So by, but by following these 10 steps that I've just given to you, based on biblical wisdom, we can unlock, you can unlock your true potential and honor God with your gift. Remember these gifts are given by God to specific individuals for the benefit of the entire church. And they are still relevant for us today. Hallelujah. I pray for you today that God will bless and prosper you and your ministry in Jesus' name. God bless you. Now, to get copies of our books or ebooks, you can contact us directly or visit Amazon.com, seller.co, C-O, uh, that is, or bookteria.online. You will succeed in Jesus' name. Remember to like and follow my ministry page on Facebook. See you next time as we continue this series of teachings that I believe will be a great blessing to you and others on this channel. Bye for now.